Good evening, Monday Morning Quarterback, episode 45. How was your Monday? Hope it was great. Mine was good. I'm trying to get things put together here to head off to Florida next week. We'll be at the uh, USAC Quarter Midget opener at Daytona next week, and then the following week at Ocala for the USAC National Sprint Car opener. So looking forward to getting down there and getting the outdoor season kicked off. Um, got some new stuff we've been working on and excited to get that on track. So got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Last weekend I was at uh, Columbus, Ohio for the indoor quarter midget race. Uh, my first trip over there for the winter. Seems like all of the, the dates they've had have fallen on um, other events we've been at, whether it be PRI or Shootout or Chili Bowl or something like that. So it's good to get over there and see customers, catch up with them. And, uh, and we won a bunch of races over there, so that was, that was great to see. Our quarter midget guys um, did very well over there and really throughout the country. Um, got a lot of good reports from quarter midget customers, so, um, so that was good. And uh, we're looking forward to midgets and sprint cars and micros and, and all of that firing off here in the coming weeks. So we're in the process of putting together our uh, schedule for 2019 and what events we're going to go to. So um, we'll get that all up on the website as we get... A little bit closer, probably here before the end of the week. Um, I know we've decided to go to the big three-day uh, now 600 race at Port City in March, um, so it'll be cool to get back out um, and see some micro racing. Not sure if we're quite ready to go back to Tulsa yet, but it's a month away, and then we're going to go from there to Texas for the uh, second round of the National Quarter Midget stuff. So might try to hit uh, another race while we're in um, Texas there in March. So. Got some of you guys tuned in. Um, tonight we're going to talk about low speed versus high speed dampening, how that affects your race car, and um, some things you should look at. I've been kind of preaching to you guys the, the previous 44 episodes or so about learning your numbers, um, knowing what the true dampening forces are in your shocks and not relying on the old traditional valving numbers. And this dyno graph I'm getting ready to show you is going to be a very good indicator of why that is so important. Um, so as I show you this graph, you're going to see that the 3 inch number is um, almost identical on these two shocks, but the low speed and high speed dampening is quite a bit different. So I will show you this graph now. So you can see that the 3 inch per second number, which is what you would find on the bottom of the graph there is um, essentially the same on compression or rebound so um, if you missed the episode where we discussed how to read a dyno sheet I would encourage going back and looking at that I should have that episode number but I don't but any positive number um, is going to be compression negative rebound so on our graphs from the zero line up or north is going to be compression so as you can see on the compression side, the blue graph um, has less low speed dampening and more high speed, where the red graph is the opposite, has more low speed dampening and less high speed. But as it intersects there, it almost intersects exactly at the three inch per second number. Um, and then on the rebound side, you can see the three inch numbers about the same again, but the red graph has less low speed and high speed so this shock is going to feel totally different on the race car, although they both could be marked the same old school traditional valving number because the three inch number is the same. So, um, so that's why it's so important to know these dampening numbers. So how does high speed versus low speed um, work and how does that uh, affect the race car? And one thing that um, I think is very important to note is low speed is very important and we get asked this a lot what's more important low speed or high speed well low speed is what the driver is going to feel so as the car transitions um, through the corner and around the racetrack it's going from compression to rebound um, countless times in a lap and as it does that the shock has to slow down to change direction so it's going over what I call the crossover point a lot so it's speeding up into the compression phase stopping slowing down and going into the rebound phase as the shock goes through its motion 
And so low speed is what the driver feels. Now, as a mechanic or a crew chief sitting in the stands and you see the car um, bouncing, you're witnessing high speed and probably a lack of high speed dampening in most cases. Now, it's not always the shock's fault. Sometimes the shock might be valved correctly for the application. However, the car's unsprung. It either has too soft of a torsion bar or coil spring. You don't have enough air pressure in the tire. Um, etc. and the shock can't make up for the deficiencies in your setup. So as we've mentioned in, in episodes past, shocks are a fine tuning device um, and a, a, the correct shock isn't going to fix um, a, a poor setup or, or some other deficiency in your setup whether you um, don't have enough uh, torsion bar rate, um, not enough air pressure, or too much. So Again, the high speed is the visual that uh, a mechanic or a crew chief will see um, as the car goes around the track. It's really hard for them to witness the low speed, um, but that's what the driver's feeling. So as you analyze your shock data, um, low speed is what the driver feels. And on smooth, slick racetracks, a lot of times we're not even getting into the high speed. So um, typically for us, two inch per second and under, we would classify as low speed. 5, 6 inch per second and up is going to be high speed. Um, how do you control that? Well, a lot of it has to do with um, us and how we build the shocks. So you're, we're going to control the low speed of the shock uh, mainly by bleed, either through the main piston or a bleed shim in the main piston stack, depending on the design of the shock. Um, if it's a non-adjustable, maybe a bleed jet in the shaft. Um, and then the high speed is going to have a lot to do with the shim stack, the shape of the piston, etc. And that's why it's so important to have a shock built specific for your application and what you're doing because um, a micro sprint needs a different high speed control number than a sprint car would and on and on and on. So um, very important there. Kind of while we're on that topic, we've had several instances here in the last few months where, where shocks have came in from somebody else who's rebuilt them and, uh, and the level of craftsmanship and how parts are put together in them um, isn't up to our standards and it's just not right. So I want to caution that um, whoever you're sending your shocks to that, uh, that you're comfortable and you know that they have the, the knowledge um, the experience and the equipment to do things um, properly. A lot of the, the work we've seen has just been a, a lack of the right equipment, um, not having the right tools to do the job, and so kind of makeshift stuff going together. And shocks are a really intricate, delicate little piece, so um, if you start using the wrong tools, they can get tore up in a hurry. So fully aware that not everybody can send their shocks back to Indiana um, if you're one of our customers and that's why we've been um, very proactive in finding good rebuilders that, that we can train and show why we build shocks the way we do and, and what things are designed for and, and not designed for and so we do have a few rebuilders kind of scattered throughout the country that can help you out and get you fixed up if you can't get the shocks back to us. If you ever had a question on um, if someone is, is able to rebuild CSI shocks, feel free to reach out to us because we do see folks posting that uh, they're a CSI shock rebuild center and they've, one, never been trained by us, um, which doesn't mean they don't know how to do it, but the big thing is they've never bought parts from us. So in a lot of our shocks, um, CSI specific parts need to go back in or they're not gonna get rebuilt how they were designed. So I'll get off my, my course on that one, but um, just seen that a lot here recently and want to make sure that everyone's aware of of, um, of that and that their, their shocks, you know, your shocks need to be rebuilt by somebody who can do you a good job. So um, as we're looking at, at that graph again, I'll kind of go back to it. Um, you'll see my, my arrow out here, high speed, and that's um, between eight and nine inches per second um, on this particular graph. And then the low speed I'm showing is a little over an inch and a half. Um, most of the time, we're going to really focus on the zero to one inch number for our main applications. Micros, midgets, sprint cars, quarter midgets. The zero to one is what we're going to focus for low speed. 
and then uh, high speed we're going to look at that six inch per second and up as we're tuning high speed for um, your given application so when we get feedback from you guys um, as far as how the car's handling what you're feeling we'll look at those numbers and, and custom tailor low speed and high speed for what you need um, and it, it's really important uh, as I said that the shocks are built for your application um, because that's just the trend that's the way everything's going um, everyone has good equipment anymore the fields are tighter than they've ever been and trying to get that last little bit of speed out uh, a lot of times we can find that in the shock and getting a good good tuning um, there so the next two episodes I'm gonna be on the road so we're gonna do them but we're gonna do them old school um, just with the, the phone and uh, so got some good stuff we'll talk about then when we come back my first week back from Florida um, we're gonna show you um, some shock parts and uh, and some dyno time and how we tune low and high speed and uh, and and how it's different while we're on this topic and we'll go into this a little bit more um, in a couple weeks but when you hand dyno the shock so you push it in and out by hand you all you're really feeling is the low speed and the bleed so you're not really getting a good indi indicator of what the, the true dampening of the shock is because you can't physically move it as fast as it would on the racetrack and so <clears throat> that's why it's important to um, not just go by the old hand dyno um, when trying to select your shock because you're just feeling the bleed and the low speed so one shock might have more drag than another one might be built with more bleed than another um, but you're not feeling the true dampening of the shock and it's not a real good indicator um, of what you have the hand dyno is good for checking to see if you might have a potential issue with your shock as we explained last week, you know, full extension and then that initial compression stroke. Is there air in the shock? Has a gas bag broke? Um, Etc. So we will turn it over to some questions. See if any of you guys have questions yet. Um, Todd, love your new shock package. Awesome. Glad to have you on board. Uh, hello, Rick. Glad you're tuned in. Steve, glad you're tuned in. Uh, Neil, what's the best way to give uh, give us feedback? Um, so a number of different ways. Email is my preferred method just because um, I have a history of it then. Um, I can reply from anywhere because you know I have my email on my phone. Um, so that's the, that's the preferred method. Um, but you can always give us a call at the shop. I'm more than happy to talk you through any questions um, or feedback you have and we certainly do do value that. And then kind of the the new way is through the PitLogic app. So you can, uh, if you're a Gold Level member, send us setups to review um, and, and stuff. So that's another good way to um, to get setup advice from us. So um, speaking of the PitLogic app, um, Kevin has notified me that he's uh, done a ton of work on it here the last week or so on the iOS version. So um, we're plugging along pretty good on that. He's happy with the progress. So. I would say sometime in the <clears throat> in the next few weeks we'll be able to give a, an official release date for that. Um, so it's coming sooner rather than later. Uh, I know a bunch of you are Apple users and have been waiting for the iOS version, so um, Kevin has been working diligently on that. And uh, we hope sometime in the next few weeks to be able to announce the, the launch date um, of the PitLogic app, the iOS version. So thank you guys for being patient there. Uh, so any of you guys that are tuned in have questions pertaining to uh, tonight's topic, low speed and high speed dampening, or uh, anything else with your, your race program, hopefully a lot of you guys are getting ready to get kicked off um, the season here, and uh, hopefully the weather's warmer than it is here because, man, we're supposed to be like negative double digits the next few days, which is really cold for us. Um, so everybody loves T-Bone Trevor. He is uh, threatening to not come to work the next two days because it's too cold for him. He, he looks like the kid from the Christmas story when he comes into work every morning. He's so bundled up. We like making fun of him. Anybody else that's tuned in have any questions for what's coming up? Um, the quarter midget folks that are tuned in, we've had several requests here in the last few weeks about uh, me doing... Um, kind of a, a chassis and setup seminar similar to how we do our shock seminars 
and I'm certainly open to doing that. If enough of you guys um, want to do it, it would be probably here at our shop at CSI. I could bring in a setup table, all the tools, the car, and we could go over everything from um, how I do my weekly maintenance on the quarter midgets, um, how we square them, set them up, uh, adjustments for specific tracks, and then uh, how we kind of manage our tire program, which is an integral part of quarter midget racing. So if any of you guys are interested in that, um, comment here, shoot me a PM, shoot me an email, and uh, if there's enough interest, we'll pick a date and, uh, and definitely do a quarter midget setup thing for you guys. Negative 30 in Minnesota. Gosh, Neil. Okay, I'll quit griping about negative 12 or whatever it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> Colin, you've seen the, the graph um, we displayed. Um, when would we use the different shocks? And so typically, um, you know, these are just two different shocks I picked, but typically on a smooth, slick track, we're going to want a softer low speed compression and more low speed rebound to um, let the car transition and, and then hold that uh, load in that corner more and we're going to run more high speed dampening on rougher racetracks. Um, so the shocks I displayed weren't really a good example because the red graph was more low speed dampening less high speed um, which isn't really ideal but those were just two graphs I found that the three inch was almost identical but they were um, a fair bit different there in the two settings so uh, Everett awesome for uh, your first win glad you guys were able to do that that's cool Don negative 45 with wind chill we're not canceling slot cars tomorrow night Don we're racing we'll turn the heat up and do it um, Brandon, do you prefer an adjuster that changes bleed or preload? Very good question. Most of our people tuned in probably don't know what you're talking about, but there's two styles of, um, of adjusters. Most of the shocks in our core markets are using a bleed adjuster, and, uh, and that is my preferred method for micros, midgets, sprint cars, etc. Um, the preload adjusters are awesome for pavement late models and stuff where you're really trying to adjust um, clamp, um, and different things like that and trying to get some really really high rebound numbers but most of our stuff is uh, is bleed adjustable and that seems to be the the best method it's also a much more cost effective way to build an adjustable shock versus the um, preloading a shim stack uh, mark if you purchase the android version does the membership transfer to ios unfortunately it will not and that is, uh, has nothing to do with us, but Google Play and the Apple Store are totally separate entities. Um, the good news is you can store all of your data, uh, upload it to the web, um, or back it up to the, the cloud there in your Android app. And then all you have to do is cancel your Android subscription, get the Apple subscription, and then download all this stuff into your Apple device. So the app's the same, the data will transfer, but the subscriptions don't. So once you're ready, get all your data saved to the cloud, um, which you can do in the app, and then cancel that membership, get your iOS, and, uh, and bring it back into the app. So um, a teeny bit of legwork, but then you're not paying double memberships. Tim Clark's tuned in from New Zealand. Tim, how's it going? Hope you made it back from, from uh, Chili Bowl safe and sound, and we got some shocks for you when you're ready. Steve Osborne, congratulations on a fast time in Junior Animal. You guys, I believe, just moved up from rookie class, so that's awesome. Uh, Eric, you don't need to label your shocks. Um, they're serialized, so we're just going to match them up. Um, I believe you might have sent me an email on that earlier today, and I haven't got a chance to reply to all my emails. Monday was crazy today. Uh, good news, Tim, for uh, our shocks in New Zealand. Um, gosh, the modified stuff in New Zealand has been going really good on our F8 shock that uh, we build for Tim and then he tunes for, for that market down there, so that's been fantastic. Anybody else tuned in have questions? Um, we're certainly glad you joined us, and uh, next week we'll be doing it from the road. Um, Trevor and I are headed down to Daytona, 
and um, and then the following week we'll be shooting over to Ocala for the the USAC stuff. So we're going for the sun for a couple weeks. Maggie and Hudson get to join next week, so they're looking forward to getting out of the cold. So Carla, hello. All right. Well, we're going to sign off for tonight. We thank you guys for tuning in. If we didn't get your question answered, um, comment and I'll get it answered, and we'll. we'll uh, or shoot me a PM and we'll answer it that way. So hope you all have a fantastic week. Stay warm, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.